In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I put together this image. Not only will I show you the shooting and lighting techniques that I used on site, but I'll take you step by step on the edit as well. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Matthew. I am an interiors and architecture photographer based in Kansas City. And if it's your first time here, make sure to do all that classic YouTube stuff. Make sure to do this and hit that button and all that sort of stuff. Feel free to follow me on Instagram as well, Matthew A. Photo. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so like I mentioned, I'm gonna get into the breakdown of this image, not only how I shot it, but the edit. If you are only interested in the edit portion of this video, that's perfectly fine. Feel free to skip forward to this time code. Okay, so I've got my laptop here in front of me. I don't think you can see it on screen, but I've got all the raw images uploaded into Lightroom. So let's walk you through, kind of give you a tour of this space via the uh, the images that I took. All right, so what you're looking at right now, none of these images have been edited. Nothing's even really been adjusted as far as highlight, shadows, color, all that sort of stuff. So a little bit of background. This is for a local interior design company based here in Kansas City as well. And uh, I've worked for them before. This is the second job they've hired me on. Uh, this was somewhat of a living room remodel, not necessarily uh, remodeling much as far as the, the structure, but more of the aesthetics, all the decor and some of the paint colors I think were changed as well. And, and obviously the furnishings and things like that. So they hired me to photograph the space for them and throw these images into their project portfolio as well. Okay, so let's give you an idea of the rest of the space based on some of the other shots that we took. Uh, what we're going to do, pretending that we're facing this direction, we're going to turn to our right and show, I, I don't know what the technical term is for it, but I'm going to call them French doors. We're going to turn to our right and look uh, straight down this direction. This is another shot. So on this side, we have, uh, again, I'll call them French doors. We have a fireplace to the left. We have this small, very, very little wall on the right side. And uh, I'll show you again from another shot really what that is, but we've got the couch, these two round um, coffee tables. And this shot is kind of that, that in-between shot of that one point perspective you saw at the beginning and this other one point perspective you just saw. This is kind of that angled shot, really highlighting the, the fireplace and letting your eye kind of walk through between the two pieces of furniture there to, to lead you in that direction. So now we're turned even a little bit more to the right and we did not end up uh, using this shot at all. And I'll tell you why. For one, the client really only wanted shots highlighting the living room because they had done some work in the dining room, but a big piece of the furniture in the dining room, mainly the dining room tables and chairs, had not arrived yet. At the time of recording this, obviously a lot of companies are dealing with supply chain issues, so uh, those were on delay. You'll also see a little bit of a lighting challenge that I'll, uh, I'll kind of allude to, but I'll explain here in a bit as well. So really, instead of a typical four-sided wall room, we really only have three sides. And this fourth side, there's really not a wall at all except this tiny little thing that sticks out. I'll even call it a large column just with the one painting. Now this is a shot that I took facing the exact opposite direction as the other one point perspective uh, from the other side of the French doors. Clearly we have this kind of sitting area here on the right. So as far as the natural light coming in, we have three big main uh, areas of windows where that natural light is just pouring in. But as I'll show you here in a bit, having all three open at the same exact time would really kind of hinder that look, mood and feel that I wanted to go for in the final images. So to give you a clear idea of my thought process and how I was setting up the lighting, I figured it was best to actually show you via diagram. Okay, so here is kind of a, a bird's eye looking straight down aerial view of the living room. So on this side of the living room, we have a set of French doors letting in a lot of natural light. And on the exact opposite side of the room, we have another set of French doors letting light in there. And then as you saw, we have the sitting area right about here letting in natural light from a completely different direction. Now, as far as the position of the camera goes, I ended up setting the camera roughly here. And then as you may be able to tell in the photo itself, uh, I was using a 24 millimeter tilt shift lens. So set it up here, make sure everything level is straight and then shifted a little bit to the right side because I really, really wanted to make sure I did not miss the fireplace, which is over in this area. So to remind you where the fireplace is, I think I should draw just a, a little tiny flame. So lighting wise, what was I wanting to do? As far as the natural light coming in, it was great. We had a ton of natural light coming in and hitting the space, even though it was very, very overcast cloud. No, I take that back. It was raining. 
outside. So obviously very dark gray overcast, but it wasn't the thickest amount of cloud cover we had. So there was still, again, a good amount of natural light coming in. The benefit of that though, we weren't competing with any really harsh uh, highlights or, sh or shadows that were coming in through the window. So it was nice, soft, even diffused light. The problem was, is we had a ton of light coming in from this direction. And we also had a ton of natural light coming in from this direction. If you remember back to a previous video, I think it was on the five basic principles of architecture photography. You might remember me saying that in order to get those awesome, dramatic style architecture photos, you want the primary source of light coming either towards the camera or the very least perpendicular to it. So in this instance, yeah, we were going to have a lot of light coming in left and right that was perp perpendicular to the camera. The problem is though, the natural light coming in from the left is going to cancel out and fill in the shadows of the light coming in from the right and vice versa as well. The light coming in from the left is gonna cancel out the highlights and shadows of the light coming in from the right side. The other primary source of light coming in that I definitely wanted to keep was the light from the little sitting area. I didn't mind that because that light was coming directly towards the camera, right at the camera. So in this instance, I had to kind of pick, do I want to show a lot of the natural light coming in from right to left or left to right? Mentally, I did a bit of a coin flip, but I knew that in order to really show off the drama of the fireplace here, I didn't want that on the darkest side of the frame. So I decided to close off these curtains and really show off the light coming in from right to left. So let's walk you through some of the actual frames here so you can see what I was doing on site. After I have the camera set up, I've got my composition locked in, my focus locked in, all that sort of stuff, and I'm ready to shoot. Generally, what I'll do is I'll just do a bracket of images starting from roughly about two stops, take it down to about one stop, overexposed, and then uh, I think this was about the exposure that the camera thought was a proper exposure. And then I'll take a couple shots uh, even darker than that. Again, knowing that I've got, let's see, roughly about six or seven frames of bracketed exposures, I, I know that realistically, I'm probably only going to use maybe one or two of them, but it's just nice peace of mind knowing that I have them in my back pocket if I ever need them. Now, what some photographers may have done, and honestly, I could have done this uh, myself and the end result may not have been that much different than the photo that you saw at the very beginning of the video. I probably could tweak, adjust, and mess with colors and highlights and shadows and all that sort of stuff on this frame itself and everything would have been perfectly fine. Most of the natural light coming in in this frame is coming from right to left and from that sitting area directly in front of us, it's coming towards the camera as well. So I, I do think there is a lot of drama, there's a lot of mood in this photo and you know, mission accomplished. I, I think this image on its own looks pretty sharp, but there's two reasons I didn't do that. One, it's just not my style. I do like to add a little bit of surrealism in my images while it still looks natural. And you'll see what I mean here in a bit as I put this together. The other problem was, was a on-site lighting issue. As you saw earlier in that diagram and on some of the photos as well, there's not a fourth wall that's blocking out uh, light coming from behind me as well. Although there's not a massive window or anything like that directly behind me, there's still some natural light coming in towards my back that's hitting the living room as well. And you can see that here on the back of the couch. Again, it's not a ton, but I really would like to do everything in my power to eliminate that altogether. So my personal solution is, is if this was kind of a, a typical base layer or a, a one shot exposure that I could make good on my own, I'm gonna take it down maybe a whole stop, maybe even a stop and a half lower and then build off that with flash that I control and can maneuver however I see fit. So this is the image that I'm gonna use as my base layer and then I'm going to build on top of it, adding light to the base layer with the other exposures that I took where I lit up different parts of the room with my flash and Octobox soft light. So this was just a test. So this was just a test shot. Wanna make sure everything's firing, but you'll already get to see some of the benefits of using uh, a flash light. A big one is that, a big one that I like is color consistency. Uh, your main light source when using a flash is one color temperature, it's one color tone. Uh, if you set your color temperature right on, uh, and uniform across all your flash exposures, everything's gonna be the same consistent color temperature as you start to blend, edit, and put them together. Now, when using this Octobox flash, my goal 
the whole time I'm using it for most of these shots, as you'll see, is to mimic that natural light coming in from right to left. Yes, I was getting some, like we mentioned, from that sitting area, but really the end result that I wanted to showcase was a, most of the natural light coming in from right to left in the final frame. So as I'm standing there with the softbox, I'm mimicking light that's coming from the French doors. In a perfect situation, I would have used my seven foot Westcott umbrella, put it outside and really blasted a ton of light coming in from a larger light source to really mimic nice, soft, diffuse light coming in. But like I mentioned, it was raining and not an ideal situation to set up a piece of lighting equipment outside. And because the couch was the most telling piece of furniture to show if there was light coming from behind the camera, that's what I started with. I wanted to make sure that I could nail the highlights and shadows on the couch so as not to make it look like there was any light coming from behind the camera. So I just stood in different parts of the room. I wanted to make sure that I was getting a nice gradient light fall off, not only on the couch, but the items there on the coffee table, this little potted plant. No matter how big that softbox is, it leaves shadows here that are still relatively harsh. You can see it's not a harsh line as if we were using a direct light, but it's still not as soft as if we were only using light that was coming into the French doors. So we'll deal with that later. Another problem that you see in this frame is that as I'm trying to mimic the light coming in through the French doors, we're getting this really ugly reflection not only on the fireplace itself, but on the TV. And because there's a little bit of sheen to the wood above the fireplace, we're getting reflections on that. We'll deal with that in another frame. But a cool thing I did notice when using a flash to light up the fireplace was that the light from the flash was really bringing out the tones and texture of the metal. Granted, I could have done some tweaks and adjustments to really bring that out, but I'm always afraid of making it look overly edited and artificial. But if I can bring that out using just a different kind of light as opposed to just overly processing and editing it, uh, I'll go with a different light. So in this frame, my intention was just to really light up kind of that, that sitting area and those pillows there in the corner. Here, I'm trying to light up the two chairs on the left side of the frame. And then the other part I really wanted to make sure not to miss was the wood beams. So yes, you will notice in this frame, I am doing somewhat of the opposite of what I said my intention was. I am lighting up the fireplace and the wood on top of the fireplace, but I'm lighting it from the completely opposite direction. The goal in this instance was to light it up without getting those reflections that I was getting in uh, in the other frames where I was shooting from the other direction. But again, as you can see, a big benefit here in using this kind of light to light up specifically the, the fireplace is we can get some of that really cool texture and varying color tones in the metal. All right, so let's walk you through the actual edit. Like I mentioned, I'm going to start with this slightly dark frame here. And although we're not dealing with a ton of highlights, I do like to generally tone them down just a bit. So I'm gonna go negative 20 on the highlights. Shadows in this case, I am gonna bump up to about 40. And again, that's just to, just to taste texture, or excuse me, clarity, I'm gonna bump up to 10. Vibrance and saturation, I'm gonna leave alone because most of the color that I'm going to get is going to be from uh, the flash exposures. So as far as color tones, I'm not gonna do much uh, with this frame at all. Uh, click the box here for moving chromatic aberrations, profile corrections. I don't think any are gonna pop up because I'm using the tilt shift on a, on my Sony camera body, so it's not picking up that information. Color temperature wise, I know that on site, I checked this, it needed to be 5,413 on the tint. So as not to keep it as dark, I'm gonna bump up the exposure almost a half stop. Now let's go over to the flash exposures. Now the flash exposures, I'm gonna keep pretty consistent on the edits all the way around as far as how bright or how dark I want them to be. I'm gonna mess with that in Photoshop. Highlights though, I'm gonna to tone each one of these down to about negative 15. I'm gonna bring up the shadows about 15. Clarity, I'm gonna bump up to 10. And then vibrance and saturation, I just bumped that up a little bit to 10 plus. And then I know that the color output of this light is 5,500. Tint will still leave at 13. So I'm gonna copy the settings from this frame and apply them to all my other flash frames. So now each one of them has the same exact settings, color, temperature, highlight, shadows, adjustments, all that sort of stuff. So let's select all the flash frames, including this one at the very end, including my base layer, and then we're gonna open all these in Photoshop as layers. Okay, so we now have all our layers here in Photoshop, but they are backwards the way I'd like them arranged. So I'm gonna highlight them all, hit it, or hit layer, 
uh, arrange reverse. I'm gonna hold down Alt, highlight my base layer, and that way this one is the only one that's showing for the time being. Okay, so now let's start adding the light. We'll create the image. So I'm gonna turn on that layer, but hold down Alt, hold down the mask button, and we're gonna block it out. I'm gonna change the layer of this one to the blend mode to lighten. Get a soft brush here. I'm, I always turn down the hardness all the way down. I like as soft a brush as possible. And we'll adjust the size accordingly. But at about, I'm gonna change the opacity of this to about 20%. And we're just gonna start blending this in. So as you can see, I'm basically adding the light. The main thing I was lighting up in this instance is the couch here. But I'm also gonna utilize the light. It's also throwing across the other parts of the room as well. I'm not just going to utilize the light there on the couch. But uh, I do know for, for sure, one thing I don't want is myself in the shot. So I'm gonna paint myself back out of this. All right, add the next layer. Same thing. The mask, change the blending mode to lighten. And I'm gonna change this one to 30% so it goes a little faster. And then we're gonna paint the light from this on here as well. I'm just, <laughs> I'm gonna hit edit, fill, and white. I'm just gonna utilize the whole thing. Uh, I think the only thing I'm going to for sure paint out is this reflection here. And I'll get that brightened up in another, in another layer, but I'm gonna leave that as is. Okay, next layer, same thing. Add the layer mask, change the blending mode to lighten. And I'm gonna change the opacity of this one like 60%. So again, it goes faster. It's just gonna add, fill in some of those shadows because I think I was shooting at a slightly different angle. And again, it's, it's gonna help give it an overall more natural look if you use, because that light that I'm shooting from a flash, although I am lighting it to light up a particular portion of the room, that light's also bouncing around other areas of the room. So I want to utilize that light as much as possible. When I use, I call it fill lighting, the stuff that's bouncing around. So I want to use that fill light as much as possible too, because that's going to help give it that, that overall uh, more natural look. All right, scroll up here, add the next layer. And I don't think I'm going to use much at all from this layer of what we did to light up the fireplace. Cause again, we're getting those huge massive reflections, but Still, I'll change the blend mode to light, lighten, and I will for sure use this to brighten up the sitting area here. Most of what's on the left half of the frame. We had a little, ah, see, I don't want that reflection there on the coffee table, so get rid of that. Then again, let's go over here and use the light from this to brighten up the left side of the frame. Next layer. This for sure, I know for sure I use this to uh, to lighten up the sitting area. Now you may look at this initially and go, well, Matthew, this doesn't look, now you're really getting away from that natural look. Bear with me here. I do this kind of finishing touch. I do a couple things, a finishing touch to really bring back that, that natural look. Again, because some of the shadows here are probably, even though I'm using a soft box, are probably too harsh. Let me utilize some of the light here again, still, using this layer to brighten up the left side of the frame. Clearly, like I mentioned, use, was using this layer to lighten up the chairs. Next layer is for the beams. And I'm gonna add this subtly. Cause since again, I wanna show off, kind of really emphasize the light coming from right to left. I would figure the right side of the beams of the frame are gonna be brighter than the left side. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll do a little bit of even and out. Again, I'm alluding to kind of this finishing touch that we'll do at the end. And then this side, this I'm gonna hit lighten as well, and then use this to really bring out some more detail in the texture and grain of the fireplace and the wood above the fireplace too. Plus, I'm using it to, to get uh, brighten up the curtains and wall on this side, because nothing was really lighting up that side as well. And the other benefit of shooting here is I get to lighten up this shadow. You're probably looking at this going, well, Matthew, the 
point of doing highlights and shadows, show off the direction of the light. And while that's true, you'll understand what I'm doing here. Now I duplicated the layer and I'm gonna change this one to normal. I'm gonna hide it and I'm gonna kind of paint that in because I wanna do the best I can to get rid of, you still get the sense of this harsh shadow line here. And I wanna try to blend that as much as possible. So still not perfect, but we're, we're getting there. And then the last frame, this one really uh, brought out the texture in the metal. So I'm gonna hide that layer, hit lighten, and then brighten just the fireplace up here a bit. For the most part, uh, we've done about 70% of the work here. Um, as you can see, it, you know, it, yes, it does feel like the natural light is coming from right to left, but it still looks, I'll admit, it looks a little faux, it looks a little fake, it looks flashy. But that being said, there are still some areas where I think it really enhances the texture and color tones. I don't necessarily want that flashy look over the whole entire frame. I might wanna pick and choose where I leave it and I take it away. So now let's add that finishing touch where I'm gonna bring back some of that natural look and feel. We're gonna go back over to Lightroom. And now I'm gonna pick a frame. I think we referred to, let's see, it was frame 9073, this one. I'm gonna edit this one as if this was the final image I was going to, going to deliver to my clients. So I'm gonna bump the highlights down, let's say negative 30, let's bump shadows up, about the same. Let's bump them up to 30. Clarity, let's add maybe to 15. I'm not gonna mess with the color because I don't want anything color-wise from this frame. Contrast, I just might bump up a bit to 10. And then the overall exposure, I'm gonna hit Alt to make sure how, to see how much of the highlights I'm blowing out in the back. I really, I'm not too particular about the detail uh, through the windows at this point. That's a little bit too bright for my taste. So I'm gonna, let's take the exposure down to let's say 0.6. I think that's good right there. Now this frame, yes, for sure. I wanna check my white and black levels. White levels, if I'm getting them mostly out the window, that's perfectly fine. I'll leave those at 20. The black levels, I just wanna touch barely. See, we're getting a little bit. If I go extreme, the place where we start is in the fireplace, which is fine. Uh, for round numbers, yeah, let's take it to negative 15. Okay, so that looks like a pretty decent frame. There's a good amount of contrast. It's not flat looking, but it obviously this one looks more natural, but I like the color tones and the textures of the other one. So let's blend them together. Let's take this frame and add it into Photoshop to our other project. Big difference I can see already if I turn this layer on and off. Notice how in the corner, the uh, light from under kind of the ceiling of the sitting area is about the same brightness as the wall itself, but clearly that's not what it is in our natural frame. We have this cool gradient that happens above the fireplace here. Uh, that's a little bit lost in our flash layer. Uh, we get a little bit of subtle reflection in the fireplace, in the natural frame. That's pretty much lost here in the flash layer. And the other part that we missed too by only emphasizing light coming from right to left is we didn't really get a chance to showcase a lot of the light coming directly at the camera uh, from the, the window seat light as well. So I wanna blend some of that in. So how do we do that? Turn this layer on hide it and change the blend mode of this one to luminosity. Now you could just change the entire thing to luminosity, but like I mentioned, I'm gonna be a little selective in where I use it. Um, I know for sure I wanna add it here because I wanna bring back some of that directional light, showcasing the contrast of the highlights and shadows. I'm gonna even paint it over the window as well. I'm not gonna paint over it totally because I don't wanna lose a ton of the detail in the window. I wanna retain a little bit of it, but I don't need it to be the most detailed. I don't need it to be one of those ugly window poles that you see in a lot of real estate photography. Uh, the other portion where I know we're losing a little bit of that drama is what hits the objects here in the window seat itself. 
Now, as I start to paint this in, you will notice another problem that I've started to introduce, which we will have to fix. But overall, let's see what the difference is on and off. See, we've lost a little bit of detail in the texture of the blanket and the seat itself. So I'm gonna back that off just a tad, just to bring some of that back. A little bit, a little bit there and in the blanket there we go the other part i want to see what it looks how it looks different is in these chairs pretty good i want to see what the difference is on and off see, again the highlights and shadows look a little bit more natural i want to see what painting this in does to the floor here see i like this because it's adding a brighter spot on the floor towards the window light which again looks more natural and the other benefit is the part of the floor towards the camera is getting darker. So we're getting more of that mood, that drama as we introduce it. Now, here's something I want to avoid. As I paint the luminosity in on the left side here, this lower left corner, I'm making that floor brighter and I don't want that. I want to keep that dark. Let's look at the ceiling here. What happens when I start to add luminosity layer here? Oops. Okay, so we're at 100%. <laughs> So I'm not getting a chance to see that subtle of a difference. So we've added a little bit more reflection in the beams here from the window seat area, which I'm fine with. And we've actually toned down a little bit of the brightness level on the right side of the beams. I, you know what, I, I wanna leave some of that brightness. I don't wanna get rid of it altogether. I'm just gonna repaint that back in it just a tad, just the taste. Okay, so let's mess with the fireplace now. I know for sure, the way I was talking before, I wanna add some of this luminosity in. I don't even know if these are French doors. Somebody's gonna let me know in the comments. They're probably just doors. <laughs> it's probably a technical term, just call them doors. Now again, I am definitely going to use this luminosity layer here for the floor. Because again, since I wanna showcase the light from right to left, I want the right side of the floor to look significantly brighter than the left side. What does this luminosity layer do to the couch? Okay, already I don't like it. Because if I bring in that natural layer, I'm gonna add in some of that light that's coming from behind the camera and I don't want that. I don't want it showing up on the back of these cushions but maybe I do over here. See, I'm losing some of those, that shadow. I'm gonna leave that as is. I like it like that. Let's see what it does here to the coffee table. Okay, see, another, uh, I'm kind of torn. You know what, I'm just gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna get rid of the shadow. I really wanna, I want the drama on this potted plant. The other benefit is too, is we, we get to retain all this texture that the flash light brought out on this coffee table. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at the before and after. Okay, let's go to the problematic areas that I see. Two are jumping out at me. One of which is this portion of the wood here. Uh, I think we're getting a little bit of issue. Yeah, see on the or on this little sit sitting pad, uh, the blanket as well. And then the other portion I saw, let's see, I think it was up here. Yeah, is in the color tone, uh, kind of on the ceiling part of the wood area or the, uh, of the sitting area. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add another layer, but we're gonna change this to color. And then we are gonna sample a color that I want it to be, the, a proper color in the ceiling and then I'm just gonna select this area that has the funky color cast that happened from blending in the luminosity layer. Just add it at 20% and then just subtly. There we go, much better. All right, let's do the same thing down here. Still sticking with the same color layer. I'm gonna sample the wood tones that I wanna keep and then be being really precise with this one. You know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint it at 100. All right, let's do the same for the pad here. 
Looks like a very light beige. There's a little bit of blue color casts here. Looks like we're getting rid of those. Looks decent. Let's do the same thing with the blankets. That's good. Uh, kind of the same issue with the shadow that was here before. Just to add a little bit of drama to this, one of my final finishing touches that I do with most of my photos anyway is do a curves adjustment just to brighten up the midtones a bit and then bring down the shadows a hair just to add a little bit of more punchiness and uh, contrast to the photo. I'm gonna bring up the black levels to about nine. And I would leave that as is, but since overall, I think I brightened up the photo and I want the left side to be darker, normally I would just leave the photo as is, but I'm gonna take, zoom out and take a big soft brush and paint it out of this side. So now we've basically brightened up the right side of the frame, more or less. So we've added just a little bit more of that, that moodiness. I think overall, that's it. After this, I would merge all the layers into one layer, do my adjustments for verticals and all that sort of stuff, maybe do a little bit of sharpening. But overall, that gives you a pretty good idea into my editing process. So that'll do it for this video, guys. If you watch the whole entire thing, as always, I sincerely, I really do. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. If you got anything out of this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up. If uh, you're not subscribed to the channel yet, maybe consider doing so. Feel free to follow me on Instagram at Matthew A. Photo. If you had a question about any part of this, I'll do my best to answer it, but you can drop your questions in the comments below or maybe shoot me a DM over Instagram as well. But yeah, that'll do it for this video. We'll see you on the next one.